Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about Lori Vallow again. Now it's been a while since we last talked about Lori Vallow. If I recall correctly, it's been over a year, I would guess. I feel like the last time I discussed it was a very long time ago. I will put a brief summary of everything that's occurred here. I'll also link articles down below. Now, one key thing about the case is that there's a lot more said about Lori Vallow than her husband, Chad Daybell. I don't know if that's just because of what the press is deciding to put out there, what the press even knows themselves, or because Lori Vallow is more guilty. I'm gonna focus a lot on Lori Vallow because we have more information on her, and if you've seen any of my prior videos, I've made it no secret that I do believe she's guilty. There's a lot there that is extremely alarming in my opinion. Regardless, let's get into what's going on right now. She would cut me up. Ex-friend says Lori Vallow once threatened to kill her. There would be blood and bleach and something about trash bags. Audrey Baratiero testified she would bury me in a place nobody would ever find me. A former friend of Lori Vallow Daybell testified that the doomsday cult mom once told her that she would cut her up and bury her body. Audrey Baratiero, a one-time friend of Vallow Daybell, took the stand Wednesday at the Idaho mother's ongoing murder trial in the slayings of her two children, seven-year-old Joshua J.J. Vallow and 16-year-old Tylee Ryan. Vallow Daybell and her husband, Chad Daybell, are charged with the murders of Tylee and J.J., who vanished in 2019. They've pleaded not guilty. Baratiero told the Boise courtroom that she cut off the friendship with Vallow Daybell in October 2019. Prior to ending their friendship, Baratiero admitted on the stand that she had participated in quote-unquote castings or prayer circles to expel quote-unquote evil spirits that were organized by Valo Daybell. Baratiero told the court that her one-time friend made the death threat while staying at Valo Daybell's apartment in October 2019, according to the East Idaho News. While Baratiero was packing her bags, she claimed Valo Daybell threatened to dismember her and hide her corpse. One thing I think we can't ignore and pretend doesn't exist is particular esoteric beliefs about evil beings, dark beings. I don't want to say anything in terms of like exorcisms or being demonic, but a lot of these darker beings to me sound like they are parallel to that. I could be wrong, there isn't much detailing of what exactly everything entails, what they mean by dark beings. That being said, I don't really think you can separate that from everything that's going on here. You guys know I don't really like dragging religion into things just because I feel like there's a lot of stereotyping going on there. In cases such as this one though, if someone's going around screaming about evil beings, dark beings, whatever, you can't really separate that from their lives entirely if they make that a center focus of their lives which it seems like they did based on what was reported this whole thing with baratiero about apparently saying that she would murder her chop her up all these things i'm split on and i don't have an opinion and i probably won't for a while because i don't really feel like we have much to work with there's some left in the article, we'll get to that. But first of all, I think the belief set of Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell is complex, weird, I don't understand it, and it freaks me out. Because of course everyone has a system of categorization. And that goes for anything even beyond religion. There are people that you deem good people and bad people based on doing thing X or not doing thing Y. It's completely valid. That being said, we've seen it a few times with certain people that with religion, there's this carrying away of labeling someone as evil, dark, whatever, and then kind of coming to a conclusion after the fact in the sense of the kid, for some reason, you think they're a dark entity, they're a dark soul, whatever. And then once you've decided that, you find reasons to reinforce the conclusion you got to, right? So you get to your conclusion and then suddenly they start wearing a lot of black. I don't know what they see as something dark, okay? But they start doing things that are alarming to you. Then you can be like, ah, my original conclusion was right. They effectively are. Again, I'm not saying these are things that happened. I'm saying these are things we've seen before. The whole thing about chopping her up and putting her in trash bags, it's odd to me that this didn't come up earlier. Now, the fact that it didn't come up earlier doesn't mean it's not true. That being said, when cases like this happen, these high profile cases that are weird, have some esoteric religious beliefs happen, 
we've seen it happen before as well that some people come out of the woodwork with some claims that seem to reinforce the popular narrative and the popular narrative here let's not get shit fucked up is that most people at least that i've encountered that i've seen in the comments that i've seen in the comments of articles youtube videos whatever agree that Lori Vallow, for one, is guilty and Chad Daybell is also guilty to some extent. So this person coming out kind of seemingly out of nowhere, as far as we the people not involved, just the people who read articles about it are concerned, you gotta wonder why is this only coming out now? Is it the press that was withholding it? Is it just happening now? According to this article, it seems like it's just happening now, like she's just coming out with this information now. The thing that concerns me a little bit about this is that I really hope that it doesn't take away the focus that should be on the murders of the children because this has been going on already for a long time and it doesn't seem like we're getting close to any type of conclusion, though that might just be my perception, my warped perception of time. It's suspicious, though at the same time, would it really surprise me that Lori Vallow, if she saw this friend, this ex-friend as a dark entity, would it really surprise me that she has some weird and extreme reaction to this friend? No. Would it surprise me if she said something completely unhinged? No. Like I said, this is just based on what I know. This is not any kind of matter of fact or even solid opinion. She said she would cut me up and wasn't in the mental place to do it, but would get herself in a place to do it, Baratiero said in court. The newspaper reported. There would be blood and bleach and something about trash bags. She would bury me in a place and nobody would ever find me. JJ and Tylee's bodies were found on Chad Daybell's property in 2020. Prosecutors previously said Tylee had been dismembered and that her remains were later set on fire. Last week, a forensic pathologist revealed JJ had died by asphyxiation. It was the first time the seven-year-old's cause of death was publicly confirmed. The cause of death for Tylee remains undetermined. Valo Daybell's defense team, however, seized on Baratiero's explosive accusation involving the death threat, casting doubt on her credibility. Notably, Jim Archibald pointed out that Baratiero's admission wasn't raised during grand jury proceedings. Nothing of the sort was talked about, Archibald said to Baratiero in court, according to the East Idaho News. You want the jury to believe that you didn't make this last crap up? I did not make it up, Baratiero responded. Ian Pavlovsky, Vallow Daybell's nephew-in-law, also testified about Lori Vallow's extremist religious views on the trial's 21st day. He also told the court of Vallow Daybell's obsession with zombies and light and dark spirits. See what I was saying? Prosecutors have alleged that Vallow Daybell and Daybell killed JJ and Tylee in part over their fringe beliefs, which also included apocalyptic end-of-the-world scenarios. Earlier in the trial, a Rexburg, Idaho police detective recounted to jurors about the grisly moment JJ's decomposing body was found on Chad Daybell's property. I saw a little boy in red pajamas, Detective Ray Hermosillo said in court. He had a white plastic bag around his head, several layers of duct tape from his chin to his forehead area. His arm was duct taped with several layers. His arms were folded across his chest. His feet were also duct taped and bound. Vallow Daybell is also charged with conspiracy in the murder of Chad Daybell's ex-wife, Tammy Daybell. Vallow Daybell faces life in prison if convicted in the murders of JJ and Tylee. Chad Daybell will be tried at a later date. I really have so many questions and I've had questions for years, so I'm not gonna repeat questions I've had, but even in terms of Tammy Daybell, there's a lot to go over there, which I have discussed in the past and all of that will be linked down below, but it really is a rabbit hole with this case and I think that's probably why, and hopefully this is the only reason and there's nothing else delaying it, is that when you start looking into one of their things, whether that be their fringe beliefs or else, it's really like you're falling falling down a fucking never-ending well and then you come out on the other side of a well and then you find out this other thing and you fall back down so it's basically you going inside and outside of this double-sided well I guess my attempted metaphor truly failed but anyway I really think that at the very core there is something off I do think the esoteric beliefs are a central thing this zombies dark spirits whatever I think that has something to do with it because truly I believe that that is how Lori Vallow probably contextualized hurting her own children, murdering her own children, allegedly. Once you have that belief set in place of like, oh, I'm eliminating this dark source of energy or whatever it is, I think that's a way to contextualize things in a way that makes it digestible for you to do, as opposed to saying actually what you are allegedly doing, which is murdering your own children in cold blood and then hiding their bodies, hoping nobody's going to find them. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below. I just hope they really get to the point with this because it frightens me slightly to think that 
outside people could come in and chime in with their own two cents, which granted, if Lori Vallow did threaten this ex-friend, that's valid, that's important, but also I wouldn't want the whole case to go in the direction of did she actually do this, did she not? Because of course if she did actually threaten her friend it might give even more credibility, quote unquote, I think there's plenty, but even more credibility to the fact that she did hurt her own children. But at the same time it's like how long is that going to take? And if it turns out that this friend is lying or manipulating the truth in some way, does that help Lori Vallow at all? I don't know any of these answers because I'm not a lawyer and I don't have the information, but I really just wouldn't want the center focus to be lost here. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>